Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on with our master budget and we're going to move on to the budgeted income statement at this point. So quick recap once. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However... I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Again, we're going to go through the whole thing here. Just This does have to be done in order if we break it down into its pieces. It's not too bad, but we do have to start off with a sales budget, then a production budget, raw materials budget, direct labor budget, factory overhead budget, selling expense budget, general administrative budget, and then we had some cash worksheets to help us out with the cash budget. And then we did the cost of goods manufactured budget. And now we're going to scroll down to the cost of goods sold budget. Those two items are going to be needed in order for us basically just to get that number on cost of goods sold for us to calculate on our income statement, which is where we are at now. Now, of course, an income statement is basically income and expenses. We're going to start off with income called sales in this case. So we got total sales. And we're going to pull that from up above. So we're going to say this equals. And we're going to scroll all the way up top to where we had the sales number. All the way up here. That's that 1,44472 of sales that we will have. Then we're going to calculate the next number will be the cost of goods sold. I'm just going to say this equals what the cost of goods sold is up there where we calculated it on the uh, cost of goods sold calculation. And that will then equal what we calculated up here, this 1,191,865 we have there. And then the sales minus the cost of goods sold will be the gross, oh, I'm going to undo that, undo that. That'll be the gross profit. And we're going to subtract that out. So our cost of goods sold is kind of like our main expense. So we're going to say this minus the big expense, the expense related to basically inventory. And then we then are going to scroll down to the next set of items. Those items are going to be operating uh, expenses, expenses, colon. And we're going to start off with sales commission. Sales commission is going to be an expense and it's not included in the production process. It's not up here. It's going to be down here in kind of like the period cost generally. And so we're going to say that equals and we're going to scroll up to the uh, area where we calculated the sales items. So we have the sales commission here, and it's going to be the sum of all of those. So I'm gonna just say equals the sum of the sales commission for July, August, September. We also could have got it from the uh, cash flow budget because we did pay cash for this, so it would be on the cash flow budget as well. Then we're gonna have the sales salary sales salaries and we're going to say the same thing i'm going to say this equals and once again we could take it from from the sales budget as well but i'm going to go back up here to our our uh i mean we could take it from the cash flow budget as well but i'm going to go up to this area again to the sales budget and say it equals the sum of the july august and september information so we're talking about the quarter here so we're going to say enter and then we have the general and admin, general administrative salaries, 
general administrative salary. So we're going to say equals. I'm going to scroll up to the general administrative. And again, we paid cash for it, so that would be on the cash budget. But I'm going to go to the general and administrative salaries, which is the sum of these 11,000. So I'm going to say this equals the sum of the J July, August, and September. And actually, I have a total column over here, but we could have done it either way. It's the 33,000. 33,000. And then we've got the long-term note interest. That is, of course, an expense, being that it's on the income statement. I'm going to say that equals, and I'm actually going to pull that from the cash flow statement. So we had the long term, 5000 a month. I'm just going to pick up that 15 right there instead of going all the way up. And then we've got interest expense. We'll call it short term note interest. We also had another note. Maybe we had that smaller note, and that was the just the 120 here because we paid it off, remember, after the first month. So the only expense we have on that is the 120 we paid in July, and that will then give us our total operating expense. So this number we will pull out to the outside here, and we're going to sum up this column. So we're going to sum up the left-hand column, the operating expenses. So this equals the sum of, and we're going to take the uh, 130, 248 down to the 120, adding those up, giving us the 188, 868. We could underline this if we want, home tab over here, underline if we so choose. And that will give us the net income before tax. So we'll tab over here, net income before tax. This is going to be the gross profit, what we had sales after cost of goods sold, gross profit minus the other operating expenses. And note that we always calculate taxes at the end because income taxes kind of throw things off because uh, they obviously go up as net income goes up, income before taxes go up. And we said that there was a tax rate if we look at our data of 35%. So we're just going to take this number here, 66,467 times 0.35, and that's going to be how much tax we pay. Now notice that 35% is a flat tax. It's a simplified type of tax. We often have to do that in real life. There's a progressive tax, which is much more complicated to uh, do a budget on. So oftentimes we'll, we'll estimate a flat tax when we're, when we're doing an estimate such as this. So we're going to say this equals the 66,467 minus the tax then. And that will give us the 43,204.